What happens when a destructive Katie did clashes with a tent spider? The home ground advantage may not be enough. From a distance, it looks like a misty cloud in a rainforest canopy. Don't be deceived. Enter this gossamer nightmare, and you're on a guaranteed journey through hell. It's the hunting ground of the tent spider. And worse still, where there's one tent spider, there are hundreds. Tent spiders live in groups. Each spider has its own web, but it's connected by frame lines. And the big advantage of this is that they're able to feel vibrations throughout the colony. This is particularly helpful if a potential predator comes through. This fly has made a fatal error. The tent spider senses vibrations. It drops onto its prey in a split second. They grab it in their third legs, and then they wrap it up, using their fourth legs to pull swaths of silk. They wrap up their prey very, very effectively. Once the victim is wrapped, it's bite time. Behind feelers called pedipalps are menacing fangs that curve inwards to pierce and rip their prey. Within moments, the tent spider is back at the top of her silken dome, devouring her tightly wrapped snack. Just yards away, also prowling for a snack, another equally terrifying rainforest fighter. The destructive Kitty did. Its super long antennae detect far off prey. The antenna are at least as long as the body, so this allows the katydid to sense prey approaching from quite some distance away. They're incredibly active and mobile, just cruising all the time, checking out, getting the cues, trying to get that little elusive chemical trail to tell it what's approaching or what's recently been around. Its lime green body is near perfect camouflage. When it's time to eat, this bug is all business. Whether it's gorging on a giant cicada or disemboweling a live caterpillar. The destructive Katie did and the tent spider are both sit and wait hunters, but they still take the occasional midnight stroll. Tonight, one of them will regret not staying home. Next, a lethal encounter in a cloud of death. Then, turf warfare in meat ant territory. And later, two killer huntsmen go head to head. Strung across the rainforest canopy is a silken cloud of death. For anything that enters, there's no guaranteed escape. The spiders will attack any prey that's small enough for it to handle. This destructive Katie did has few rivals on terra firma. 
But when she takes to the air in these parts, she's vulnerable. The intense spiders have lousy vision, but they are incredibly sensitive to vibrations. And so they're very, very responsive to airborne vibrations and vibrations in their silk. The katydid's unplanned landing is met by a barrage of legs and spider silk. They wrestle frantically. As long as the coyote did is stuck in the web, it is at great risk of becoming prey to the tent spider. It needs to cut its way out and fast. If those jaws do break free, the fight could turn in an instant. This Katie did has really big, nasty jaws that could totally do in this spider. It's important to the spider to keep that Katie did as far away as it possibly can from its body while still entangling it further or wrapping it up further in silk. The Katie did tries to kick through the silk with its sturdy hind legs. It snips at the web. The spider must move fast. What it needs to do is it needs to get in there, bite the Katie did, and pump as much venom as it can in there, but still make sure that that Katie did can't bite it. The tent spider makes its move. <laughs> Now it's up to the venom to do its deadly work. Even as it begins shutting him down, the katydid continues to fight. But it's too late. Today, venom wins. And the silken cloud of death claims another victim.